In today's video, I'll be showing you how to build an indoor pathfinding application for the MetaQuest 3 and 3S devices. To build this application, we'll be using the Multiset SDK. It's a very powerful scan agnostic visual positioning system and object tracking system SDK from a company called as Multiset AI. What makes this SDK so powerful is its flexibility. You can either use your existing scans from Matterport, Polycam and much more or you can use any devices which has LiDAR sensors to map your environment. Now talking about the Multiset's VPS capability, it's incredibly robust. It works in challenging environment as well, for example changing in lighting condition and it even works when there's a slight environmental shift without having to remap the whole thing. So in this tutorial, I'll guide you through the entire process from mapping your environment to deploying your AR navigation app on your MetaQuest device. Now before we get started, there are some prerequisites. So as you can see from the website, you need to have the latest version of Unity Editor installed which is Unity 6 and the recommended version is 0.55 F1 LTS. Then you need to also make sure to have the Android build support module installed. Now this is an option that you can select while installing the Unity editor itself. Now coming to the hardware requirements, you need to have the MetaQuest 3 or 3S device. It does not support the older version of devices because we are building it for pass through and the older devices does not have it. Now moving on to some other requirements, you need to make sure that you have a stable internet connection. Then you need to have the access uh, to the APIs. Don't worry, I'll show you how to get this later in the video. And finally, you need to have some basic knowledge of how to develop using Unity. All right, so make sure that you have met all these requirements and then let's get started. The first step is to register yourself as a developer on the Multisets portal. You can find the link for this in the description below or you can visit developer.multiset.ai and sign up. The signing up process is free and it's really simple. Once you've signed up, log in inside the portal and take a moment to familiarize yourself with this dashboard. Step two is to map your environment with the Multiset iOS application. Now, as mentioned earlier in the prerequisites, you need to have an Apple device with a LiDAR sensor in order to map. The Multiset app basically leverages the power of your iPhone or iPad's LiDAR sensor to create a detailed 3D map. So, head to the App Store, search for Multiset and download the application. Then, log in with the developer account credentials that you just created. Next, click on the plus icon at the bottom right corner and select the create map option. Follow the on-screen instructions to start scanning your environment. Make sure to move slowly and steadily, ensuring that you have captured all the areas where you want to implement navigation. Now, if you want more information, their website provides the details on how you can plan your mapping. So make sure to check that out. Now, once you're happy with your scan, you can click on the stop icon at the bottom right corner. Give your map a name and submit your map data. This will then upload your map to the Multiset Developer Portal, which will then be processed on their server to create a detailed 3D mesh. It might take a while, but once that's done, you can test by localizing in the Multiset app. Now this overlays the generated 3D mesh onto your real world and you can assess how good your map is. All right, now with a map ready, it's time to jump into Unity and start building our AR experience. So step three is to set up your Unity project and import the Multiset SDK. Let's start by creating a new Unity project. Now, as per the requirements, you need to have the editor version six or above, and I'm using the version 6.55 F1 LTS, which is the recommended version. Then you can select universal 3D code render pipeline, give your project a name, select your project location and create the project. All right, so here we have our project open. Now, since we are building it for the Quest devices, the first thing that you want to do is to switch the platform. And for that, you can navigate inside file, build profiles, select your platform as Android and switch the platform. Now, once you have switched your platform, you can import the Multiset Quest SDK. You can do this easily by using the Unity Package Manager and adding the SDK via Git URL. So if we have a look at their documentation, you can copy the Git URL. I will leave a link for this in the description as well. Then you can navigate inside Windows Package Manager. Click on the plus icon and select Install Package from Git URL and paste the URL here and press Enter to install it. During the installation, it will ask you if you want to enable the OpenXR features. Click on Yes and then restart the editor. Now while the SDK is getting imported inside Unity, head to the Developers Portal navigate inside credentials and create a new credential. Then copy or download the client ID along with the secret key and make sure to store them somewhere safe. And also make sure not to share it with anyone else. 
All right, so here we are back in Unity. The multi-set quest SDK has been successfully installed. And not just that, it has gone ahead and installed all the other dependencies as well, like the MetaQuest SDKs, OpenXR plugin, and the XR plugin management. We require all of these for us to be able to build the AR experience on our headset. Next, we need to import two more things. First is the multi-set quest samples, and second is the text mesh pro essential resources. So to import these samples, head to the multi-set quest SDK and navigate inside samples and click on import. And now to import the text mesh pro essential resources, navigate inside windows, text mesh pro and import the text mesh pro essential resources. All right, with that, we have all the packages that we need. Now we can set up our project in just a few clicks. Navigate inside file, build profiles, select player settings and here select the project validation tab. Make sure that you're on the Android tab and click on fix all to fix all the issues. Then navigate inside Meta XR and fix some of the issues that are mentioned here and apply the recommended settings as well. All right, so with that, we have a project set up. Next, we'll see how to set up the sample scene and build it onto our Quest device. So to get the navigation sample scene, navigate inside samples, multi-set Quest SDK, the version, sample scenes, navigation, and open the navigation scene. Now this scene comes with a default map. Feel free to explore it, but do not look behind this wall. You have been warned. Now, since we have our own map and we don't require the default map, you can navigate inside map space, select this prefab and delete it. And you can also select the POIs and delete that as well. All right, let's pause here for a minute and try to understand how this scene has been set up. And let's have a look at the different components that have been used. So first we have the pointable canvas module. Now this allows us to interact with the different UI elements that are present in our scene. Next, we have the pass through component. Now this component allows us to see the real world. And this is what allows us to create the AR experience. Then there's a multi-set rig. Now this is very similar to the camera rig. But the only difference is that it has been set up with some additional component inside the center eye anchor that shows different information to the user during localization. Then we have the multi-set SDK manager. Now this prefab has all the core components that will allow you to localize the map. So the multi-set SDK manager first checks the authentication of your credentials and also the runtime authentications. Now the single frame localization manager, as the name suggests, is everything about localization. You can select the localization tab, whether you want to auto localize, whether you want to localize in the background. If you want to have confidence check, then you can check the threshold and whether you want to show alerts or not. Then this component also has callbacks which you can use to perform different actions. So basically this component takes care of the entire life cycle of localization. The quest input handler script is a sample script that shows you how you can use a button press to relocalize. Next, the frame capture manager captures individual frame using the pass-through API and sends it to the multi-set servers for localization. And finally, you can use the map mesh handler to configure how you want to visualize the mesh, whether you want it enabled, whether you want to enable occlusion, or if you don't want to show any mesh. The webcam texture manager prefab is required to get the permission from the user to access their camera feed for processing. The map mesh downloader prefab, as the name suggests, allows you to download the mesh of your map into your scene. The navigation controller prefab has a bunch of components that work together to generate a path from your current location to your point of interest. All right, now that you have some idea on how the scene has been set up, let's move on to our next step, which is connecting your project to the multiset account to bring your scanned 3D map inside Unity. And to do that, you can select the multiset SDK manager and click on open multiset configuration. Here, you'll have to enter your client ID and the client secret key, and then you can verify the credentials. Next, to download your scanned map, head to the developers portal, navigate inside maps, copy the map code, go back inside Unity, select the multiset SDK manager, paste your map code here, then select the map mesh downloader prefab and click on download mesh. Now it's going to take a couple of minutes for the map to get downloaded. And once that's done, you'll get this pop up. Now there's one important thing that you should know, and that is this mesh is an editor only prefab. So what it means is that when you build this scene, this mesh will not be included in your application. It is here only to help us visualize and to help us 
place the point of interest in the right location. So talking about the point of interest, it takes us to the next step, which is of course, placing the point of interest and setting them up. POIs are nothing but virtual markers. It can be text, 3D objects or anything that serves as a destination or waypoint. To add a POI in your scene, first navigate inside map scene, navigation content and create an empty game object and call it as POI. Then inside your project window, search for POI. Make sure the search is selected for all and scroll down till you find the POI prefab. Then select it and drag and drop it inside the POI game object that we just created. Now all you have to do is place the POIs at different locations of your interest. For example, here we have a coffee machine. So I'm going to place it over here. Then configure your POIs with a list title, which is going to be a coffee machine. The identification number has to be different for each POI. So for example, when you add the next one, it has to be one and so on. Now, if you're going to have a same identification for two different POIs, then it will not work. The POI name is also going to be coffee machine. If you want, you can give a description. Now you can select the type. I'm going to set it as a room and that's about it. Now, similarly, I'm going to go ahead and add different POIs. One probably at the fire extinguisher, one at the emergency exit. Here we have a pool table. So one near the pool table, one near the restroom and so on. So I'll see you in a bit. All right. So I have set up different POIs at different location. Now the next step is to set up an agent and bake the mesh so that we can see a navigation mesh towards the point of interest. So to set up the agent, select the nav mesh prefab. Here you can select humanoid and open agent settings. Here we can set the radius to 0.25, the height to about 1.5, which is little more than the average human height. We'll have the step height of 0.5. The max slope can be 45 itself. And then you can close this window. Then we can clear the mesh that has been pre-baked and then you can click on bake to bake your nav mesh. If you're not able to see it, it's most likely that you have hidden it. So you can click on this icon over here and you should be able to see the nav mesh. Now after baking, I'm able to see that there are some holes in my nav mesh and I'd like to correct it. For example, there's a big hole over here and some over here. Now these are some of the objects that were there from the sample scene. So if you open the nav mesh here, you can see better corners. So you can select that and disable it. And now you can see that the nav mesh is filled up. Now the best and simplest way to fix a hole like this is to add a plane object and bake the mesh again. So inside my map, I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to place it somewhere over here, above like that and resize it as well. And then I can select the nav mesh and bake it once again. And now you'll see that the hole would have been filled up. Now you can simply select the plane and delete it. All right. So with that, we are almost done. We just need to double check a couple of things. So for that, navigate inside Meta XR tools, select project setup tools. And here, if you see any issues or any recommended settings, make sure to fix them all and apply all of them. Then close this window, navigate inside assets, plugins, Android, and open the Android manifest file. In this manifest file, you need to make sure that all these four user features are present. If not, make sure to add them. I will leave this text in the description below. All right. So with that, we have everything set up. Now, all that's left to do is to connect your headset and build it. So make sure you're connected your quest device, then navigate inside file, build profiles, open the scene list, select the sample scenes and delete it. Add the open scene, then go back inside the Android tab. Click on build and run. Create a new folder called as builds. Give your file a name and click on save. All right, the application has been successfully built onto my headset. Now it will try to localize. And if it fails for some reason, you can try to relocalize by pressing the A button on your right controller. And after successful localization, you'll be able to see the origin. And then you can press the B button on your left controller to open the list of destination. And based on your selection, it will show you the way to your point of interest. And once you reach the location, it will show you that you arrived at the destination as well. So we were able to build a fully functional AR navigation app for the MetaQuest devices in such a short period of time. Now imagine the possibilities of what you could do with this SDK. 
you can use it for entertainment, retail, corporate training and much more. By the way, this was just the multiset Quest SDK. You can make use of the multiset Unity SDK for AR Foundation and build similar experiences for Android and iPhone mobile devices. I have only scratched the surface of what you could do with the multisets SDK. Make sure to check out their documentation for more advanced features like object tracking and for the web API for building WebXR experiences. I will leave a link for this in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.